I like to think of interfaces as joining a club. It's like joining a club. When you join a club, there are some benefits, but to join the club, you have to pay some dues. To join the remote control club, you have to write these methods. Those are the dues that you have to pay to join the club. But once you join the club, you get some benefits. You get to use the remote control that someone else has built for you. Implementing an interface is like joining a club. OK, let's look at a couple more, and then we'll declare victory on today. There's a example given here of a bicycle interface. Hopefully it's still around. Oh, here it is. OK, look at this interface. I noticed something weird when we were doing this interface over here. It says public interface remote control. We don't usually write this, even though we can write it. I don't think private interfaces will be that useful, so I don't think there's any reason to write it. And I want you to notice here that these methods also do not have public or private in front of them. Try to discuss with your partner why it would not make sense to have public or private in front of these methods. And by default, what are these methods? Are they public or private? Okay, Ms. Alana, what do you think? Do you think these are public or private? They're all public. How come I don't have to write public? Okay, not only does it not have a reason to be private, but if you made them private, then no one else would be able to access them, including the people at the Promethean company. So when they went to write the code for this, all the methods would be private. They wouldn't be able to get access to them. So it doesn't make sense for any of the methods in here in this interface to be private. So usually interfaces are written like this. Let's go back and look at this other example that I was showing you here. Here is a bicycle interface. So imagine we have some sort of electric bike or something like that. And this is the interface that's being built by the quote unquote unknown company. And then some brand name supplier is going to come along and write the code for their particular bicycle. And so you can see here, this would be a good example. Now here, Acme company is implementing the bicycle interface. And you can see here that they are actually filling out all these methods. Here they're writing some other method that's not even mentioned in the interface, but that's perfectly okay to do also. So this is yet another example of an interface. Okay, I need to show you one more thing and then we will declare victory on interfaces. You might be wondering, what does any of this have to do with APCSA? And I'm going to show you an important use for interfaces that I haven't shown you yet. I'm going to call this interface demo. And we're going to talk a little bit about using an interface for something that you're far more familiar with, which is ArrayList. So, so far, we've been writing our ArrayLists like this. And it's worked well for us. Now, we haven't talked about it yet, but there are different kinds of lists in Java. The two main ones are ArrayList and LinkList, but you can define your own if you want. And so far, the only ones we've used in this class are ArrayList. Now, if you stick with me or take another Java class in college, you'll learn about another important list called a LinkList. And they behave differently. They have different strengths and weaknesses. And right now, if we were to write the, uh, the code like this, and then down here, we could make it do stuff like we could um, we could write code to add stuff to the array list, uh, remove code from it, sort the array list, all, all sorts of stuff. Sometimes when we write an application, we don't really know what kind of list we need. We sort of have an idea, but because we don't know how the user is going to use it or how big the application is going to get. So a lot of times what happens is the, the designer starts off with a guess. And a lot of times they'll guess the simpler list, which is the array list. So they'll start off building the application using an array list. Then something happens down the road. It could even be years down the road. The boss comes to them and says, um, it's not really behaving very well. Once we get past 10,000 users, the, the software seems to slow down rapidly. And let's say that the engineer does an analysis and realizes that, you know, I used an array list here, but I really should have used a linked list. So what does the designer do? They can go here and they can come over here and replace array list with link list. And in theory, everything should work. Now here's the problem. Here's the problem. Forget array list and link list for a second. Let's say that, well, actually forget link list for a second. Let's say that we had a link array list here initially. 
And then let's say that someone came along and built a much better list. We'll say his name was Bob, and he called his list Bob's list. So Bob has built his own list. And now you want to replace this array list with Bob list. But there might be a problem. There might be code in here that array lists execute or have methods for that Bob list does not have methods for, or vice versa. There might be some code in Bob's list that doesn't exist in array list. So there might be a mismatch of what the list functionality does. So for example, imagine that Bob's list doesn't have a method that array list has. Bob's list has a whole bunch of list methods, but doesn't have some method that array list does. And that list array list method is called here. Can you see that if we were trying to change the array list to Bob's list, the code won't compile anymore? Because it, when it looks for that method in Bob's list, it's not there. So because this kind of issue can arise in the future, experienced programmers don't ever write this. They don't ever write this. What they write instead is this. Now, this is a class that we have discussed at length. We haven't really discussed this so far, but can anyone guess what is list? List is an interface. Now, let me explain to you the idea of what's going on here. We're telling the coder, or we're telling the compiler, I should say, that data is going to implement a certain set of features. Those features are declared in the list interface. In the list interface, it's declared all the features that this object is going to have. On the other side, we're creating a, an object by calling a constructor for a specific list, in this case, an array list. Now, I know it's been a while since we've talked about this, but down here, what methods can data call? Can it call list methods? Can it call array list methods? Can it call either, both? What can data call over here? Like if I go data.foo, does foo have to be a list method? Does it have to be an array list method? Can it be either, both? Which one is it? Do you, do you remember we talked about this before when we said what can point to what? And we talked about those Venn diagrams. Remember that? It was a while back we talked about it. And my question is, if I have this method here, does this method have to be in here? Does it have to be in here? Or does it have to be in both places or neither place or one of the two places? What do you think? Data, I'll give you a hint. Data is restricted to calling certain methods now. What methods, what are the only methods data can call? Sir, do you remember the restrictions on data once I do this kind of weird thing where it's one thing on one side and another thing on the other side? Okay, once I declare data to be of this data type, the only methods that data can call down here are the methods that are declared in the list, either class or interface or whatever it is. So now data is restricted. Now you might be wondering why would we voluntarily restrict data? Well, here is a really important reason. Because now we want to say that the only code you're allowed to write here are list methods. Why? Because down the road, we may come around and change the list from array list to Bob's list. And now I don't have to worry that there's going to be code down here that's not going to compile. Why? Why am I guaranteed now that the code that is going to be written here is guaranteed to compile. What's going to be true about Bob's list? Bob's list will also implement the list interface. And since ArrayList and Bob's list both implement the list interface, we know that there will be a common set of methods that both will have. And those are the only methods that are going to be present here below this line because data is of type list. And so therefore, list methods are the only methods that data can call. So once again, we're using the compiler to guarantee and future-proof our code so that if a new list were to come around, as long as that list implements the list interface, we are guaranteed to know that the code down here will always compile and run. And so that is the reason why we often write an interface on this side and an actual class on the other side. And so when you see this in the real world, it's almost always going to be written like this instead of the way that I taught you to write it this year, where you have array list on both sides. So that's kind of important that we write this a lot. We write this a lot.